today's lecture about data types in the PLC and the difference between Siemens and LM Bradley from uh, data type wise and address wise. Normally there is a misconception about the data types because we, we are talking about there are three parameters actually to define. The data address, the data size, and the data type. So let's go back to uh, the basics. Assume I have one bit. So this bit has only two combinations. It can either be zero or one. What about if I have two bits? In two bits, the combination either will be, I will be have two zeros or zero one or one zero or one one. Zero zero represent in zero in decimal, zero one represent one, one zero represent two, and one one represent three. So at two bits can only hold maximum four combinations, maximum number of three. How do I know this? What is the rule for that? The number of combinations is 2 to the power n, and the maximum number is 2 to the power n minus 1. Since n is the number of the bits, I have here 2 bits, so 2 to power 2 is 4, and 2 power 2 minus 1 is 3. So by following this rule, you will know how much the number of bits, what's the maximum number and the maximum combination it can hold. So let's take an 8-bit. An 8-bit number is actually called a byte. And notice how the bit is small b and the byte is uh, capital B. The byte actually can hold 2 to the power 8, so 256 combination. So the maximum number it can hold is 255, so 0 to 255. So assume that I have a number that it is 260, let's assume it's a temperature. Can I store it in a byte? No, I can't, because the maximum number I can store is 255. Let's take a 16-bit. So if I have a 16-bit, 16 16-bit 16 bit means 2 byte, and we call this a word. Now, the maximum combinations for a word is 2 to power 16, so it's 65,536. So the maximum number I can store is 65,535. Assume for an application, I have to store a value of 80,000, 70,000. Can I store it in a word? No. Why? Because the number of the bits is not enough for the number 70,000. If I change 70,000 to a, a bit value, the number of the bits is not enough to store it in a word. Assume that I have now 32 bit. So the 32 bit, I call it four byte, and the four byte is two words, and I call those double word. The maximum number I can put, ah, pronounce it yourself, four billion something. Okay, and the maximum number I can use is this one. Now, let's see if we can apply what we learned. Assume I have a number of 200. Can I store 200 in a byte? Yes, it's less than 255, so I can store it in a byte. Let's take another number, 300. Can I store 300 in a byte? No, if I change this to a binary, the number of the bits needed to represent 300 is more than eight, so I have to store it in a word. Take another number. 30,000. Can I store 30,000 in a word? Yes, I can. Let's take 80,000. Can I store 80,000 in a word? No, I need double word to store a number of 80,000. So let's, uh, this is how the memory in Siemens actually look like, the M memory. The number of the bits, bits 0, 1, 2, 8 from this direction, and the number of the byte from top to bottom. And actually, you will see this in the Siemens in the TIA portal. And uh, I will say this again, but in Siemens, that's, it's based on the byte. In Allen Bradley, they normally base it on word or 16-bit. So let's see how the naming, how the address, remember, we said there is an address, there is data address, 
data size and data type. So assume I want to store a bit zero or one in this address. What is the address here? The address here is M, since I'm in the M memory. Number of the byte is byte three dot five. So the name is M35. If I want to have the address of this, it will be M35. The type of it is it it's Boolean because it's either zero or one. The value of it we will see it's either one or zero. So remember address, data address, data uh, type, and uh, data value. Now, assume I want to uh, store a value, uh, let's say 200 in bit value here in byte four. So in Siemens, I will say M memory, I want to store a byte and it's a start from four. So it will be MB4. If I want to store, let's say, uh, two bytes in byte four and byte five, the name is MW, M word four. Remember, word is two bytes. So byte four and byte five will be ready. So the next empty byte, if I want to store a value, it will be six. So MW4, the next value is MW6. Remember this because a lot of time you will have you my my student make a mistake with this one. Now, if I want to store double word and it start at byte two, so in Siemens you call this MD M memory double word and the start on uh, byte two, so MD two. The next empty one, it's for sure MD six. If you store something in MD4, you will overwrite and you will have a problem. Now, let's see uh, what the name and the range. So if I have something called Boolean, mean it's Boolean, it's a bit, the range is either zero or one. If I have a byte, the byte is size of it is a byte and the range is either minus 128 or plus 127 or from 0 to 255. So in total, both cases, I will have a range of uh, a combination of 256. If you see this, this is either short integer or signed integer. And this is one, they call it, it's a byte, so it's 8-bit. So it's the same thing, but it is only minus. It is signed. I have to take one of the bit to the signed. If you see int, mean it is a signed integer, it is 16-bit, and it is minus 32 to 32. If you see unsigned integer, it is 16 bit, so it is zero to 65,000. Uh, 65, so this is where the confusion start. In Siemens, if I want to store those value, both of them, I will store it in MW, whatever number, MW50. But you need, the MW50 is the address but you need to say what type of data I will store in this address. Based on the number, either you will store it an integer, something between here and here, or you will store it as unsigned integer based on your application. Do you need a minus sign? Do you have in your values a minus sign? If you do, then it's an integer. If you don't, then store it as unsigned integer. Now, the same thing, if you have bigger numbers, you will go probably to the double int, our double integer, it's a 32-bit. This is the value of it. And you have unsigned double integer with the maximum range of the 4 billion. Now, if you need more uh, or you have um, uh, you have a point like 3.14 or whatever you number with a point, it's called real. It's a floating point number. It's a 32-bit, and this is the range of it. And now we have also a 64-bit. So we have a long integer and a long uh, real. Uh, by the way, this table, I will show you it also, it's from the help file of the TIA of Siemens. So we need to differentiate. I have data address, data size, and data type. 